My name is Terry Malisi, and welcome to the gathering. I have to say I'm not a professional chef, personal party planner, or private caterer. I am, however, a gourmand, and a gourmand is one who favors good eats, and hey, who doesn't? I gave my first dinner party when I was 17, and have hosted countless dinner parties and special celebrations since. So many, in fact, people started calling my home the gathering. So when I was cooking breakfast for the Senior Center of uh, Volunteering some time ago, I was asked if I would consider hosting a cooking show. And I said, well, I love to cook, I love to entertain, so sure, I'll give it a shot. And I thought, what better name for the show than The Gathering? So again, welcome. Tonight's dinner is titled Ketchup Dinner with Friends, and my guests are my very good friends, Sharon and Dick Moran, and Patty and Steve Bryant. And for the menu, for appetizers, we're having zucchini and gorgonzola rounds, pate stuffed mushrooms, and brie baked with mango chutney. For a salad, we'll be having watercress and Belgian endive with cucumbers and grape tomatoes. For our main course, we're having stuffed beef rolls, scalloped potatoes, and carrots lionnaise. And we'll finish the dinner with a peach and pear cake. So let's get to it. I always like to start with my dessert so it has time to bake and set if need be. So for my ingredients, I have 30 ounces of sliced peaches drained, 15 ounces of sliced pears drained, one cup of softened butter, three-fourths cup of sugar, one cup all-purpose flour, one-third cup of milk, two beaten eggs, and three-quarters cup of ground almonds. Now for the topping, I have two teaspoons of cinnamon, I have a quarter cup of sugar, and I have um, a half a cup of butter melted. So what we're going to do is we are going to take the sugar and mix it with the butter. We're going to beat this until it's light and fluffy. So I'm going to slowly add my beaten eggs. Now once that is where I want it to be, I am going to fold in the flour and the milk. So what I have here is a 9 inch um, spring form pan already greased and I'm going to pour my batter into the pan and I'll spread this around so that it's nice and even and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to spread the fruit over the cake Sprinkle the ground almonds. That is looking pretty good. And then what we're going to do is we are going to mix up our topping. So I'll add my cinnamon and my sugar, and my melted butter. Give that a good whisk. Smells great. Now I'm going to drizzle that over the cake. Now, I have my oven preheated at 350 and what the recipe calls for is to put the pan on another pan and also have a pan to put on top of it until the last 15 minutes of baking. So, we're going to put this in the 
oven. I'm going to put this on top of the cake. And we should be there. I'm going to start off with the baked brie with mango chutney. I have my two rounds of brie. I have two nine ounces of mango chutney and ground cashews. And this is very simple. Take the brie, put it in a pie plate, spread the mango evenly over the brie and sprinkle with the cashews. There you have it. Very simple. And what I'm going to do is when it's time, we will bake this um, just until the brie is softened inside the rind and the cashews are lightly browned. And now for the zucchini and gorgonzola rounds. I started out with three small zucchini one package of gorgonzola, 20 grape tomatoes cut in half, oh, about one cup of Parmesan cheese, and 40 little baby basil leaves. Now for the zucchini, what you want to do is take a melon baller and scoop out the inside taking care not to go through. As you can see you just twist it around leaving a nice little hole there in the center. And we're going to take a piece of gorgonzola cheese and you can mold it in because it should be softened so you can work with it better. You're going to take a grape tomato <laughs> and plop it on top and then what we're going to do is drizzle a little Parmesan cheese, one basil leaf and pop it on top what we're going to do for these is bake them in the oven for five to seven minutes at 400 degrees. And now it's on to the pate stuffed mushrooms. What I have here are 24 mushroom caps hollowed out, again with that melon baller. I found it to be quite helpful because when you take the stems off, you're not left with much room for filling and I know um, this is a really special stuffing so I wanted to make sure each one had enough. I have the stems coarsely chopped from the mushrooms, one finely chopped shallot, and two tablespoons of bread crumbs uh, freshly ground. And over here I have one cup of Greer cheese, freshly grated. Uh, we'll top that at the end. So, what we need to do is take, oh yes, the main ingredient, a pound and a half of pate, which is, I couldn't make a meal out of this alone. We're going to take the chopped stems, put them in, in the shallots, and the breadcrumbs. And we're going to mix all of this up so that everything gets incorporated. With a teaspoon, I'm going to stuff each cap generously with the pate. It seems I might have quite a bit left over 
So what I might do is just have the pate off to the side, a separate little dish as an extra appetizer. And then I'm just going to take the greer and again generously sprinkle. I'm going to put these on a greased cookie sheet and like our zucchini and gorgonzola rounds, these will cook in a 400 degree oven for five to seven minutes. So I will put these in together right after the brie comes out of the oven. Okay, now it's on to the watercress and Belgian endive salad with cucumbers and grape tomatoes. We have four bunches of watercress, four heads of Belgian endive, two pints of grape tomatoes, three cucumbers sliced and what my mother used to do was run a fork over the cucumbers after they were peeled and it gives you this nice little ridged effect on the end. And we have for the dressing, which I will make after we put the salad together, um, two teaspoons of Dijon mustard, two tablespoons of fresh lemon juice, 10 tablespoons of salad oil, and two teaspoons of fresh dill. Okay, so I'm gonna start putting this together. And what I like to do is line the plate with the Belgian endives. Now you wanna take your watercress and pile it in the center. This makes for a really beautiful presentation. Then, you take your cucumbers and make a border around the endive. Then for the grape tomatoes, I think for an effect, put them right in the endive leaves, and then going around the edge of the cucumbers. As you can see, it didn't take much time to put that together at all. So we'll push this over and we will combine all of our ingredients for our dressing and I am mixing it in this plastic container. I'm just going to whisk this a little bit. Incorporate that all together and then I will refrigerate this and put it in a pitcher right before. Before we start with the main course, I wanted to show you the cake. It came out of the oven quite nicely. It's going to set for about another hour. For the stuffed beef rolls, we have six sirloin steaks. And what I did was I got sirloin steaks about that thick and had the butcher uh, slice them in half. I have 12 slices of prosciutto, which is dried and cured ham. I have 12 slices of provolone cheese. and. 12 basil leaves. And basically that's all this recipe is. We start with a sirloin steak and we put two slices of prosciutto. We put two slices of provolone 
and you want to make sure that you keep the edges, the cheese, away from the edges of the steak. And take two basil leaves, plop them in. And that is it. And you roll it. Squish together the ends, and you tuck everything in, and there you have it. And what we're going to do, once I get all these made, is I am going to brown them in a little olive oil and then bake them in a slow oven for an hour. These are our stuffed beef rolls ready to go into the oven, 325, very slow oven for an hour. They are looking pretty darn good. And what I'm going to do here is cover this and then put them back in the oven for the last 15 minutes. I melted one stick of butter on pretty high heat to get the butter nice and hot. And I have two large onions chopped. I'm just going to start to saute those. And I have two tablespoons of freshly chopped parsley. Get that in there. And then here I have four pounds of baby carrots. <laughs> Cut into bite size pieces. Once I have all the carrots coated with the butter and the parsley and the onions are nicely mixed, I'm going to turn down the heat and forget about it. <laughs> it will cook for maybe a half an hour. Low heat. Um, covered and we'll keep checking on it to see how, uh, how they're coming along. Okay, so it's on to our last dish, scalloped potatoes. What I have here is five pounds of potatoes peeled and thinly sliced, six tablespoons of heavy cream, three tablespoons of softened butter, one bay leaf, a touch of nutmeg, three garlic cloves chopped, and four cups of milk, salt and pepper to season. So what we're going to do is we are going to put these potatoes into a saucepan, and then we're going to take the milk, well actually, I'm going to put the bay leaf in, and we're going to put the nutmeg in, and then we're going to take the milk and pour it till it covers the potatoes, reaches the top and not covers them. And that is just about a perfect measurement. What we're going to do is put this on the stove, cook it just until the potatoes are somewhat tender, not fully cooked. Then we're going to transfer them into a casserole dish with the heavy cream butter and garlic and salt and pepper, and then we'll bake it. While that is cooking, we are going to butter the casserole dish. Then I'm going to take my garlic and drizzle it on the bottom. So the pan should look like that. All right. All right. 
right, so the potatoes are partially cooked, and it's time to get them into the casserole pan and into the oven. So with the slotted spoon, you're going to take the potatoes out of the milk, discard the bay leaf, and <laughs> layer the potatoes into your casserole pan. Of course, they will finish cooking off in the oven, 350 degrees for one hour. I'm going to season the potatoes, a little salt and pepper. And then pour the cream over the top. Now this is ready to go into the oven. So again, it will go in for an hour at 350 and we're just about there. So once this goes in the oven, I'm going to set the table and get ready for my guests. See you soon. My good friend Patty, welcome back. We have the appetizers out and ready to go. Come on over here, Steve. This is Steve Bryant, Patty's husband, and we have Sharon over here. Sharon, want to come, come over? Come on, Sharon, get in come the picture. Here. Here. Yes. Say hi. 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 <laughs> and of course, we have the pate stuffed mushrooms, zucchini gorgonzola rounds, and baked brie with mango chutney. And the leftover pate from the mushrooms. <laughs> so we're going to get going and um, hope you all had a great time. And please join us for the next show of The Gathering.